first arrived. Emergency. Please first arrive. Emergency. to the queens hello ladies gentlemen and everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum and welcome back to stardom quest the best weekly stardom podcast anywhere in the world i'm as always alex and i am joined today by scott hi scott hello everybody i'm here i am here i'm recording i got told about this about an hour ago or at least i saw the text an hour ago so that's on me i'm sure you said it to me earlier but i'm filling in for dylan I'm going to try my best. I'm not going to do as well. It's okay. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan is on a train. Um, so he, he's like suffering through the uh, American train system, which uh, we, like his train was meant to arrive like three hours ago, but it's it still hasn't, I think. So, um, you know, he's, he's having a good time. I think we have a different understanding of a good time. But uh, Dylan, if you're hearing this, if you're listening, I wish you the best in your journey. He, he definitely he definitely won't listen to it. No, he won't. Um, there's no, no shot. There's no shot. I can say anything about Dylan right now. <laughs> I'll never hear it. <laughs> That's true. Well, now is, you have free reign. Um, as always, this show is brought to you by the Five Star Podcast Network. The Five Star Network is home to us, Stardom Quest. It is home to Puro Jams, which is a monthly uh, podcast for the independent scene in Japan, both men's and women's. We also have Watch Teej, which is a TJPW-centric podcast. There is Dramatic Dream Dragons, which is a DDT and Dragon Gate podcast. And uh, there's also there's the streams that happen sometimes. The Summit, I think it's called. I always forget the Summit. And maybe some other projects come along soon. So make sure to subscribe to uh, all those podcasts and check us out on the 5 Hey, if, uh, I, if I really need to fill in for Dylan, I just want everyone to know that there is a shirt out by WWE for WrestleMania for Snoop Dogg, and it says Doggy Style on it. You're welcome. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> that is that is my uh, that's where my mind is at today. It's been a hell of a couple days, so uh, bear with me. But hey, we yeah. get to talk about Stardom, and what a weekend for Stardom! Don't listen, don't listen to all the people online. Stardom had a hell of a weekend. Indeed, indeed, they did. Um, before that, though, just to run, do- run down some of the recent news from Stardom, uh, there was an interview a few days ago that I never actually saw a source for this interview. I think we all just assumed mm-hmm. it was real, but I've never seen an actual link to the interview um, where Kyrie was talking about being a free agent now and how she wants to wrestle in America. And that got people going, oh, my God, Kyrie is a free agent now. And uh, as intellectuals, I feel the need to tell you all that Kyrie was always a free agent. There is no way she, like <laughs> there is no way she was signed to stardom to roll out of bed four times a year. That is not how they work. She wasn't on the roster page. She did her own merch. Like no nothing pointed to her being signed to stardom at all. And uh the AEW thing is probably just the interviewer knowing that asking about America always gets attention. So why the hell wouldn't you ask Kyrie if she wants to work in America? Yeah, for example, this same interviewer asked Miu Yamash about being in the Royal Rumble. So, like, you know, he knows okay. what he's doing. He, he's <laughs> yeah. getting the reactions, right? Like, that that is the whole purpose. And and as someone that has, you know, done enough work try, you know, talking about Kyrie and stuff, I can tell you this isn't big news by any means. You literally have to work through her agency to talk with her you don't you don't work through stardom to do that she is her own separate entity so like alex said the free agent thing she's she's pretty much been free the whole time she's just only wrestled in stardom so everyone thought oh she's a stardom talent yeah and i mean maybe it's a case that her and stardom's you know a verbal agreement or whatever is is at an end and she will be free to do all this stuff now but even then, I feel like that's just guessing with with kind of the limited stuff out there. So uh, I wouldn't be expecting Kyrie in uh, AEW anytime soon, nor would I be expecting her to show up on Nomads or some shit like that. Uh, <laughs> she's she's probably <laughs> st- stuck with Stardom at this stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if she wants to do a one-off here or there, fine. But 
everyone's got to remember the reason she's back in the first place is because she wanted to go home to Japan. Like, she's not going to go to WWE full-time again or AEW. This is not happening. Yeah, I mean, she's a businesswoman now, and she has a husband, so, you know. In a gym? Doesn't she own a gym? Yeah, well, that's, that's what being a businesswoman is. Oh, I thought she had a different business. I'm not oh, going to no. lie to you. Like, she does so much, <laughs> I honestly thought it was a different business. That is valid, yeah. She probably does have some floating around that isn't as public, but I, I only know of the gym, the, the 24-hour gyms. Um, another bit of news is that it has been confirmed that the next IWGP Women's Championship match will take place at Sakura Genesis. It will be Mercedes Money versus Azami versus Hazuki. Um, I've campaigned for this to be the match ever since Hazuki first talked about it. I feel like no matter what Mercedes and Azami did, it's better with Hazuki in there regardless. Because, I mean, Hazuki and Azami are very used to working people into three-way matches and making them really great. And then you add Mercedes Money's inherent creativity to that. And, I mean, you're looking at one of the most entertaining matches of the year, possibly. Yeah, it, it it's kind of a perfect storm, right? Because with the way New Japan handles these matches um, on their... J- japan shows you kind of had to go full full high speed sorry my english did not want to work there <laughs> um and I, I i joked about this somewhere else but you know Kyrie kind of gave mercedes the introduction to joshi i don't think there's anyone better to give the full introduction than hazuki because she's not going to hold back on this poor woman she is going to you know brush her boot against Mercedes' poor face a million times. She's going to hit her as hard as she can. It should be a really good match. I'm hoping for 10 minutes. I'm expecting less, but I'm I'm in agreement with you. I think it was a good choice. Yeah, it's definitely going to be more high speed than anything else. Um, I know people on Twitter are like, oh, it has to go 20 minutes. It has to go 20. It's not going 20. Gato does not care about this belt all that much. You will get what you're given. And in this case, there is no better people to make up for a lack of time than than Azami and Hazuki. So, um, you know, they are working around the limitations of Gato. And, you know, if you want to see the the real thing, then you have to watch Stardom or wait for them to book the belt in America again, which hasn't happened since. So that's great. I don't think we've had a show in America since. I'm not sure. I have no idea. I don't think they have. I no, think they, have, I one think they have one. Yeah, they have one in between um, Secure Genesis and Stardom's big show. But mm. other than that, no. Okay, and it's and it's not even on the show in between the two. Like it's not even it's not even no, a mention of no. it. So no, nope. yeah. no. Nope. That's that's the IWGP Women's Title, the very important and prestigious belt to, to New Japan. Um, hey, 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 hey. Mayu's winning that. We have to act like it's important. Stop. <laughs> well, you know, when her and Sari are wrestling for it, it'll be great, obviously. But um, Yeah, because that'll be in stardom and not in New Japan. Yes, probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, Rossi would be like, listen, man, I don't care. So this, is, this is my one. So Yeah, this is the one I wanted years ago. I'm getting it now. Yeah. And uh, he's made it. He's made it happen because uh, he very much was like, "Oh, hey, by the way, Sari, if you want to challenge for the belt, you kind of have to show up." I mean, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't read it properly. I didn't feel the challenge. I'm gonna need you to show up at a Stardom show to challenge, which is very Galaxy brand of Rossi. I can't lie. Yeah, I mean, Rossi, Rossi doesn't give a shit, right? We know this. He, he's gonna, he's gonna do his thing. And it's gonna give us a great match, and that's all I care about. Like, go do it. Go, go get us this big time match between Mayu and Sari for the titles on one of your random pay per views. And I say random because they're not gonna have as big a show as this one the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. I guess Dream Queendom technically, but um, seeing Sari's talked about it now, I don't think we're gonna be waiting another nine months for this match. Um, so I'm just excited. I definitely hope it happens in the stardom ring. Uh, Gato's not taking that one. Yeah, I mean, they, it would almost be a waste to do that match on a New Japan show. Like, even if it was Dominion or something, it's it's definitely not getting time on Dominion. So I no, wouldn't do that. No, um, no. So yeah, hope, hope stardom gets that one. But who the hell knows? Um, but I think that's all the news that we won't touch on anyway. 
uh, throughout the show. So let's just get on to the review section. Uh, we have two pay-per-views to review from this past week. The first was on March 25th. This was Fiberplex Presents New Blood Premium. This had 734 fans at the Yokohama Budokan, which is about double what most of the New Blood shows do. So in that avenue, I feel like you can say this is a success. Um, they built up to the show, and it got more people to show up. How about that? Yeah, I, I don't really know what anyone else could have expected from this, right? Like, yes, you got Kyrie tossed on there. Yes, there was a title tournament. But overall, it's not like there's world title matches on here. No wonder title matches on here. You have mostly your younger stars up and down this card. So, I mean, if you look at it in that they doubled the usual new blood, that's a good thing. If you look mm -hmm. at it at, oh, it's the Yokohama Budokan, it's like, Obviously, it's not like the best thing they've ever done, and it will, and they beat it the next day, for example. But that's always what I expected. And you have people probably saving money for tickets the next day, so uh, you you know I don't care too much about the attendance stuff. I only care when it's a win, um, which is like, for example, the um, the big show. I can't remember the name of it. All Star Grand Queen. That mm -hmm. is selling very well. I care oh, yeah. about that. Yeah, based on the website, they've sold out like five sections already. Oh, wow. Okay, that is very good. Yeah, well, they sold all the female tickets. They've sold all the under-25 yeah. tickets. They sold out and two other full sections, I think, which is, like, very good for a month out. And, you know, you still don't have Mayu versus Mercedes officially announced and stuff like that. So uh, I think they're doing pretty good, Alex. I think, I think Stardom's going to be okay, despite not the biggest numbers this past weekend. Yeah, you know, this uh and I, I would say this weekend was positive regardless. Like I'm I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident that they did well for the venue. I mean, they ran it back to back days. I assume it was cheaper and you sold basically 2000 tickets over the weekend. That's never going to be a bad thing. Um and you know, it's just a shame that these shows are dragged down because of all of the sweaty old men in the crowds, you know. <laughs> I had to do it. I had yeah, to do it. I know. I know. Uh, I, 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 those female tickets sold out so fast. It's just like, oh, man. If only there were more, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, this this company has had, like, women's only and young adult only tickets for how long now? But it's it's definitely all old dudes ruining the shows by being perverts. I, like, Joshi Wrestling is so dead. This is like a, this is like a two-week-old bit but i very much appreciate it yeah i had to do it though i feel like i had to get my zest out there somehow and i just remembered how dumb that entire thing was so um <laughs> yeah i saw one reply that was like why can't they just like get all the young women back like they did in the 80s and i'm like if ajw can answer that question they wouldn't have died <laughs> like if it was <laughs> if it was that easy ajw would still be around my friend so yeah. i don't know i don't know but um that is that is the attendance talk with Scott. We'll we'll have to do it again after for the other show. So, yes, yes, I love I love attendance talk as you, know, as you <laughs> yeah, know. it's my favorite. I know. Um, so the uh, opening match of this uh, New Blood show was actually a pre-show match, and in typical Stardom Quest canon, neither Dylan nor I ever watched the pre-show matches. I don't know about you. You you were pretty insane, so maybe you did. Um, but the pre-show match was Hanand and Hina. Momokogo and Saida and the team of Raka and Rina in six minutes when Hanan got the win with 17. What matters is Hanan won, but I had no idea this match happened until I woke up and it was already over, so I did not watch it. That was incredible. Um, the actual opener then of the show was a rookie debut match. It was Julia beating Aya Sakura. Uh, Julia won in nine minutes with a glorious driver. And uh, you know, I said from the very beginning, Sakura Ishiguro is my like bias. She's gonna be the best of the of the lot with these rookies. And here she is, throwing kicks, getting all the respect from Julia. Like Julia gave her so much more than she had to. And uh I thought Aya looked good. She like a lot of the kick wrestlers, her debut isn't great. Cause I, I remember even when Tomoka Ienaba debuted, there's like this hesitation in them that they don't want to mm -hmm. hurt people with their kicks so they have to grow into mm -hmm. really throwing them very true but you can see that she's going to be throwing mad kicks 
Yeah, I, I, I thought she held back less than like say a Jury and Nagano, for example, when she debuted. Mm-hmm. Um, because Jury and Nagano, I think, took a little bit while to be like, oh, I can just, I can just hit people hard, and it's okay. Uh, she, she's gonna be great. I think she's actually gonna be great. Like, I, I think she, I don't know how old she is. I think she's like twenty seven, maybe. Um, but she feels like someone who can kind of mold themselves quickly, uh, just by being in matches more and she's going to be wrestling a lot more than you know the people we named inaba and um juria she's just going to be she's going to be on more matches on more house shows than they had so i expect a quick progression for her and i mean i'm not going to say sky's the limit because i have no idea where she's going to end up but i'm excited as someone that loves you know someone that kicks heads off i think that's i think that's great i mean I don't know what faction she's going to end up in, but if we wanted to have, you know, Shuri teach her, I wouldn't be upset. I think I think Julia is making a play to get her already. Julia seems very yeah, interested. Um, and I know in the post-match comments, uh, Aya Sakura was kind of like, I actually want to, uh, I want to trial with every faction before I settle on my decision. Mm-hmm. So Julia did say, oh, do you want to join DDM? But Aya was kind of like, yeah, I would rather like try out a couple of them. Now, Julia did keep saying, you're an idol, aren't you, in the post-match promo? So, Julia seems to be pushing her to Cosmic Angels. I'm not sure that's going to happen. So, um, yeah, their their post-match was very, very strange. I won't lie to you. Yeah, it was an awkward one. Um, yeah. She's pulling the Lady C. She's going to be like, ah, maybe not. I'll think yeah. about it. Which is weird. Um, but it's okay, I guess. I mean, There was also mentions of a boy not really sure yeah i don't don't know where that (laughs) i was very confused yeah it was a very strange post post show uh press conference but you know the the gist of it is that aya sakura is going to trial with all the different factions before settle on on one and julia was like hey that's a great idea you're young you can try stuff and i was like isn't she the same age as you like yeah it's pretty close (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Next match then was uh, Himeka and Mika beating Hanako and Lady C. Uh, Himeka pinned Hanako with a JP coaster in just under 11 minutes. This went crazy. This was such fun hoss shit. Yeah, I think um, I think there's a replacement for Himeka already, and her name's Hanako. No, I'm not. That's not a shot at Himeka before anyone says anything, but Himeka literally gave her the JP coaster. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm not crazy here. Um, I thought Hanako looked scared as hell during her entrance and when she was standing there, and then the bell rang, and she was like, oh, I can do this. This is the wrestling part. This is the easiest part of the whole thing. Um, that's what, that's kind of what I noticed. I think with, with how good this match went, I'm happy that these two are tagging for the time being. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily need Hanako in Queen's Quest, though, um, because I, I would like to see her get a chance to stand out somewhere else. But hell of a de- hell of a stardom debut for her. Of course, this isn't her first match ever, but um, it's exciting. And Mahime, they're going to be missed. They're really going to be missed. Yeah, they're, they're like the best tag team in the company, really. Uh, that is a name, 7-Up. I was gonna say, whoa, hey now, seven up. What do you what are, yeah, seven you up know. literally is the champions. They deserve yeah. it. Just bet seven up, don't worry. Um I I will go one step further than you. I think Hanako is just as good as Himeka already, if not like, Oh like, and, and maybe oh! maybe a little bit better. She was spectacular. I, I need to give a call to Dylan. I need to get Dylan on the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I just Hanako was like a natural at everything. And I remember it took Himeka a long time to, to really settle in to start him. Hanako is just day one very impressive. Yes. So. Yes. I, I, I get it. I get it. I think she's a lot further along than Himeka was when she came in, for sure. Um, I mean, I need to see more of her matches, obviously, to get the full opinion, but she's going to be very good. And if she was the one to kind of jump into DDM and fill in for that Himeka role... Which I don't know if they'll do, but if she was, it'd be a great spot for her. Yeah, I mean, her her and Micah would be a pretty natural team if they want to continue Micah in the tag role. But um, I don't know really what they're going to do with Micah now. So who the heck knows, really? Um, but I mean, Hanako and, and Micah would be a pretty natural pairing if she did go to DDM. Um, 
Her her gear does give me Queen's Quest God's Eye vibes. So sure does. Um, it, like maybe she stays in Queen's Quest, but I don't want another big hoss in in God's Eye. I feel like you're just getting drowned out at that point with, between Ami and Mirai. So Queen's Quest is probably a better landing spot there if she's gonna keep this vibe. Yeah, I, I think you know. It'll be interesting to see what she decides on, right? Mm-hmm. Because they haven't given it, they haven't given the hint. I guess the cl- closest hint is the Lady C thing. Like we didn't get I you know, we didn't get the interview of Aya Sakura saying, "Yeah, I'm going to try everything first. So I, I'm definitely with you on the gear there, but the gear could always be switched if she joined DEO. So yeah, um, it's good gear, by the way. I want to say that the two rookies, and I know Starm's different from every other Joshi company these days when it comes to rookies. Except for TJPW, they have real gear too. Um, but I think the gear overall like helps them stand out a little more too. So uh, good for good for uh, good for both of them. I'm excited to see the um, Komomo. I want to. I'm kind of upset she doesn't seem to be debuting anytime soon. Uh, I don't know how bad the injury is, but uh, based off these two, I mean, seems like a good class. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have what a kicker, a host, and a high speed one. Like that's that's a pretty yeah. cool class to me. Um, I assume yeah. she'll be on one of the next New Blood shows. They seem to be saving all the debuts for that now, so it'll probably be what May when they announce the four. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh, May twelfth and June second are the next two. Yeah, so I I would peg it for that May one, and if not, then June if they really need it. But it'll probably be May. Um, the uh, next match down on the show was Sexy Dynamite Princess beating Super Strong Stardom Big Machine in five minutes with a pedigree. Um, I'm still not sure who Big Machine is because it, like, people keep saying it's Yuna Zamori. It looks a lot like Natsuko Tora. The arms, especially, look exactly like Natsuko Tora's arms. So I have no idea. Uh, Sexy Dynamite Princess was definitely Mariah May doing her best impression of um, Austin Powers' character. So <laughs> it was it was something, man. That is that is for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they didn't hide it much. There was the MM all over her gear, so it's not mm. like it was uh, a mystery as if anyone had a mystery to begin with when she walked out with Mina, but it's fine. Uh, the match itself was... I don't remember much of it. I just remember uh, Mariah May winning. Uh, I, I, is it Yuna? Is it Natsuko? I have no idea. It looks like, like some of the offense reminded me of Yuna, but I mean, it was just mostly clotheslines, which Natsuko does too. So I think you definitely have a good point. I think it's Yuna, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't pay enough attention, I guess. <laughs> that is fair. Um, yeah, the, there was nothing really happening in the post match promo. Um, I think Mina was like, "Hey, do you want to join Club Venus?" And she was like, "Yeah, sure. Why the hell not?" And it's it's great. They have they have a double member now, so they're a real stardom faction. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Club Venus is going to have more members of their group uh, than like any like they're going to have more than Cosmic Angels when they leave because Cosmic An- I don't count colors because they're not around all that much. Um, and Inagi's gone, so it's going to be like really weird. Is what uh, starting in a few weeks they'll have four plus mm-hmm. Zaya Brookside? Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. Yes, but like that seems to be it, and that's a lot. But hey, it's okay. Yeah, I, I mean it depends, I guess, on how long everybody stays. Because if it's like Zaya, then they're gonna need that rotating cast all the time. Yeah. Um. Because I mean I don't know how long. Well, Mariah May's here for good. Yeah, she's I'm she's excited. she's in for it. Uh, Zena is uh, kind of up in the air, and the we don't really know who the next woman is. We can speculate, but I I, I would doubt she is in for the long haul. Yeah, I, Mariah May is an interesting case because we we've come up on three months and she's still there. Yeah. So whatever she did, she is here for good, pretty much until you know her time with the company might just end. Like that's kind of how it feels. And uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon because she's getting big spots and she's now the number two. She's about to be the number two in a faction. Um, Crazy. If we're counting Club Venus as a faction now, she's already a number two. 
Um, but she she's earned it. She's been fantastic. Yeah, I mean she's she's really great. Um, she seems very intent on doing well. So that's yeah. that's kind of a good thing. Like she, I mean, she did an interview with you where she was like, "Yeah, like I want to speak Japanese and I have a lot of aims in stardom." And I'm like, "This is a good one. This is one who wants to stay." Yeah. Um, yeah. She she's trying. Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah, we we respect that. We we like that. Um, now don't get me wrong. I'm sure there. I'm sure companies around the world will be offering her a big deal eventually. Um, because you know a place like WWE, I'm sure will see Mariah May and be like, well. Duh, but um, let's enjoy her and Starm as long as we can because uh, she seems dedicated. They seem like they like her, and it's it's just a good combo right now. Definitely. Um, now the next match on the show then was a New Blood Tag Team Championship Tournament semi final match. It was Tomoka Inaba and Mirai versus Nanami and Ami Sore. Uh, Mirai got the win in ten minutes with the Miramare, and uh, yeah, this was good. Uh, it was an enjoyable tag match. There was I I, I felt bad for Ami because I was like she's not she's like she's not gonna stand out in this at all, and she didn't like her, her best thing is chops and Mariah was hitting better chops like Mariah was chopping the shit out of Nami and at that point I went oh yeah Ami sorry is kind of screwed here. Well Mariah's just better so that helps. Yes that um, is that is true. But like I, it's so funny because like Nami should be someone she should outshine. Um, and I thought Nanami had her best stardom showing yet in this match. Um, she got new gear, by the way. Like, she kind of looks like part of God's Eye now, which is great. Um, instead of, like, the rookie-type gear that Deanna had for, yeah. right? Like, and it helped her stand out. She's she's solid. Um, I will say... Inaba didn't do a lot on these two on these two matches. She was like... This was the Mirai show. And it's like, oh, Inaba's here. She's not gonna get pinned. She's not gonna get the win. She's just here, which is good. It's fine. Uh, but this was kind of like this match. She was a little more in the final. I barely remember anything she did. And I wanted her and Starlight Kid to go in there and do the damn thing. Yeah, which like we've seen her and Kid before, and they were really great. But then this match or this show, they decided it was Mariah and Kid, given that they had kind of built up to it in a tag a few weeks ago. But I definitely would have liked a bit more from from Tomoka Inaba, but I guess she was saving herself for tomorrow because uh, her and Siri kicked ass. So, yeah, I, I have nothing to add. Alrighty, um, <laughs> the next match then was uh, the other semifinal in the New Blood Tag Team Championship Tournament. It was Karma and Starlight Kid beating Chanyota and Mai Sakurai in seven minutes when Karma got the win. And uh, was it after this Karma spoke? Or was it? No, I don't think it no, was. She no, she waited till after the final. All right. Yeah, this was another s- decent match, I guess. So, Karma was better this show in that she just wrestled and didn't use fire. Yes. Baby steps. Here. <laughs> yeah. Baby steps, folks. We're taking baby steps. Next up is she talks normal. But, you know, I can only ask for so much. Yeah. Um. It, you know what's interesting, and I, I want to pose this to you. There is a middle ground for Haruku Musaki between these two characters, between her being herself and Karma, that she needs to find. Because I've been very open about this. I think Haru- Haruku Musaki is very dry as herself. I don't see she's not jumping out the door, uh, you know, jumping out with charisma by any means. She's a good wrestler that's about it with this karma character it's so much character that it's like well there has to be some charisma there but at the same time it's just not being utilized i think to the best ability like i like the gear i've said this before i could do without the face paint i could do without the supernatural stuff but there's some middle ground there i think she needs to figure out yeah i don't know her her main thing is being an idol so she's meant to just look pretty and wrestle well and not be much else. So enough getting a character would get in the way of that, you know? Yeah. It's just it's just showing more of the charisma. I don't even need a character. Mm. Just like not sh- not show up and look like a deer in the headlights. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like remember her promo to challenge Saya oh was done by Starlight Kid. Yeah, that was that was horrendous. They sabotaged her from like the moment she walked in. It was incredible. 
I mean, I, I, she she feels like someone that I don't know. She doesn't seem fully confident yet. It, like she, I look at her like a rookie sometimes, because like she's really solid in the ring. You know, Luminous is a great tag team, yada yada yada. But I don't know. There's just something missing. And the like, I watched the uh, Diana match where she teamed with Miyu Amasaki. I was like, wow, Haruka Umasaki is just a better Miyu Amasaki. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh my god. But it's true. It's true. Yeah, and I mean, even Mia was about to lap her in some of that regard as well. Yeah, because yeah. Mia, Mia's getting her ass kicked and she has to show emotion. She has no choice. <laughs> you know what? Haruka needs a passion injection match. That's what she yes. needs. Yes, let's let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's, <laughs> let's call in an eye to teach these kids how to work. It's a uh, it's, it's go-to. I'm ready to pitch passion injection matches all the time now because... Nanai has literally gotten the best matches out of each person she's done them with. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's like so. Ryu Mizunami in TJPW. It's just it just beat people up true. and give them room to perform, and it's very easy. And Nanai is the, is doing it really well. The anarchy injection matches and the passion injection matches. Hell yeah! What, what, what's not to love? I don't know, man. Uh, it's uh, the fact that other companies just don't have have an anarchy or or an Nanai to do it with. Listen. Other places could have had an Anai. That's their fault. That Other true. places could have Ryu Mizunami. That's their fault. That is true. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Um, it's not like it's not like they're not available. That's true. <laughs> they're freelancers. Uh, on the topic, though, of somebody getting the shit beat out of them, the next match was <laughs> the, the third Supernova match in a five-match series. Siri beat Miyu Masaki in 13 minutes by choking her out. She put her to sleep. It was ruthless they were tr- trading slaps this poor girl yeah. Miyu Amasaki was trying to trade slaps with Suri she got battered from pillar to post she did that with Nanai too yeah. in the passion ejection match she traded slaps I was like are you crazy <laughs> what are you doing but hey like with Miyu Amasaki you know I know she's become like a like a running joke is you know Kevin or whatever um but she's putting her heart into this. Like, if you're going to go in there and slap the taste out of Shuri and the knives melt, you know what's coming back to you. And I can appreciate anyone that deals with that. Yeah. Um, I, I've come up with a Kevin Kevin joke in Dylan's place. So the reason we call Mio Masaki Kevin is because much like Kevin and SpongeBob, she has legions of fans. Thank you. Bless. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, move on. Okay. Right. <laughs> I want. I had to let that one rest. I hope someone laughs at that because I did. I I feel like Kevin and SpongeBob is such a deep cut reference that somebody out there will. It's will... such a deep cut. Yeah, like that is like season one. <laughs> so like, so there's gonna be somebody out there who just hears that and goes, "That is that is incredible." This Alex guy knows what he's doing. So. Um, but yeah, the, the images that came out of this match were very funny because uh, Miyu was put to sleep by, by Siri and she <laughs> sold it. She was dead to the world after the match. It was incredible. She she became a mother all of a sudden, per Shuri. And, you know, Shuri's the mother of the roster anyways yeah. in a lot of ways because she, she did it with Inaba the next night. She put her to sleep. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's like, Shuri, do you know you don't have to, like, put these people to sleep? You You, you know that, right? Like, you just... You just beat them. You don't. You don't have to choke them out. Uh, but I, it was a great image. It's like one of the funniest images out there. Miyu Amasaki is all in on the bits, even if she's not meaning to. <laughs> yeah, when she's looking at deer in headlights, she is feigning death. It is. It is incredible. <laughs> um, I got a good tweet out of it though. So I mean, respect to me, right? Hey, sometimes that's all you look for in these shows. It's a good tweet. Yeah. And I, I think it was a top tier tweet, even though it didn't get as many likes as it should have. But you know, I'm unappreciated in my uh, story of my life. Not unappreciated story in our time. Life. That's us. Um, mm. Match after that then was the main event of the, or not the main event, the final of the tournament to crown the new Blood Tag Team champions. Karma and Starlight Kid got the win over Inaba and Mirai when Starlight Kid pinned Mirai with a star suplex. Star suplex, yes. All right, who needs who needs the Marai Road to be explained to you folks? Because the Marai Road is very entertaining right now, people. 
She can't get it done. And not only can she not get it done, she keeps getting pinned in these matches to not get it done. She got pinned by Suzu to kick off the year in the Triangle Derby Finals. She's getting pinned by Starlight Kid here. You know, that didn't have to happen. She didn't have to get pinned mm-hmm. here. That could have been Tomoki Inaba. You can't tell me the JTO belt has full protection over Inaba. Let's not be crazy here. Um, it's a, You know, she's not Mayu Kihi, okay? That being said, I'm all in on this road. I thought this match was very good. Uh, the best karma match to date, for those wondering, because you know why? She just wrestled like Haruka Umasaki. Um, and Starlight Kid and Mariah killed it at the end. So it was a great time. Predictable winners. We move on. Mariah can't get a win. Very sad. I just don't buy the Mariah thing, but... If, if, if... Listen, listen, Alex. Listen, Alex. It's on purpose. Let me have okay. All right. <laughs> if you say so. Um... Well, it's gonna come around. It's gonna come around. She's gonna win something, and it's gonna be great. She's gonna win the tag belts in a month's time, and they'll never have that's, mentioned the story. No, no, that doesn't count. It's about it's about the five star win. It's about the five star win. <laughs> How? How is it that another tag belt? Just let me have this. It makes <laughs> my interest better. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, after the match, Karma spoke. <laughs> <laughs> What a transition. Oh, man. The voice thing is so funny. I'm sorry, it's the best. It's it, I just I wish I had a way to like mimic it. I I can't. Oh, like it's it's it, it's you have to hear it to believe it. Like I have no idea what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> it is great. Um her, you know, her her and Starlight Kid talked shit because that's what they do. Uh they gave themselves the team name of Bloody Fate, which sounds like a band you'd make in your emo phase when you're like seventeen. Um Oh, I thought it was an anime. Might be actually. I wouldn't be surprised. I actually thought it was. I thought I heard of that before when oh. they said it, and I was like, wait a minute. But emo band's a good shout too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it definitely has that kind of vibe to it. Um and then they were challenged by Hanako and Lady C. And the Starlight Kid made a great point. She was like, didn't he lose today? Um, should, should you really be challenging? Uh, I guess that's what these belts are for, though. They're like, you know, l- lesser belts. So, yeah, sure. Why the hell not? So, a kid knows what's up. Starlight Kid uses reason far more than anyone probably should. And it's always very funny because then she gives in. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. You stink. Ah, fine. We'll do it. He's great. I love her. And it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a pro Starlight Kid podcast. Take that, Dylan. Yeah, you're not here. You're not going to hear this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out Starlight Kid right now. She's great. We're not going to talk about the Cinderella though, because that uh, tough tough look for me. <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, the main event of this show then was Waka Skiyama and Tam Nakano beating Kairi and Nanai Takahashi when Waka pinned Nanai with a uh, transformed Osui suplex hold. No idea how if that's what you're meant to say, but it is a variant of the roll up she's been doing for the past like few months where she hooks them for a suplex and rolls it through, but now she does another roll through on top of them, so it's very clever. Um, <laughs> this was this was potentially the match of the year so far, depending on like what you watch. Obviously, if you're if you if you watch like Omega and Osprey or something and you're into that kind of sick shit, then um that's probably your match of the year. Hey, 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. You can't just call things sick shit. I'm right here. Well, listen, you know, you you freaks need to be called out sometimes. It's still not my match of the year, so it's okay. That is fair. That is okay. Um, But this is probably up there for my match of the year because I, I watch good wrestling. Um, So what do you think of it, Scott? I, I need to rewatch it. Because the audio messed me all up for the whole match. Yeah. Like, I felt the moment. I felt the emotions. But I was like, ah, I just wish I could have seen everything on sync because, you know, Kyrie and Tam were murdering each other uh, at one point. And I was like, I am missing the thuds of this. And I'm very upset. Uh, Kyrie was, you know, put she put a hit on Waka at one point <laughs> in this match. It was crazy. Um, Nanai and Waka had killer end of this match so like i thought it was great i just need to rewatch it because i have no idea where i stand on it it was going to be one of my favorite ma- uh matches of the year i'm pretty sure i just i don't i don't know because i need the i need the in sync part or I, I might go and say that's fair i don't know if they've uploaded it in sync yet 
Because uh, not even, yet, not yet. Tomorrow. Yeah, like even the replays I've seen, it does go a little bit out. Now, originally when I watched it, it was really badly out of sync. Like it was mm-hmm. three moves behind at one point. Like you were hearing the audio of the move yeah. three steps behind. Um, and then I rewatched it and it wasn't as bad. And the match is definitely like excellent. So I think with, with proper audio, it'll definitely end up there for you. Um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, Dark... It pro- Good. Uh, Dark Kyrie is is like easily some of the best shit she does. Like she's just evil, and it's great. Yeah. And uh, Tam is still her best opponent. Like even since she came back, yeah. Tam is the one who's been giving her the best work. Um, cause... Well, hey now, let's give a little respect to Mayu, okay? Yeah, but you know, I mean, Tam is somebody who's like, all right, you're gonna stiff me, but I'm gonna new. fight back. Like I'm, I'm yeah. fighting. Yeah, Tam's also new, to be fair. Newer, like Mayu's yeah. just like, yeah, no shit. Good. Yeah, that is valid. Yeah, Mayu and Kairi, it's like obviously <laughs> the freedom, you know. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought Kairi was excellent in this. Uh, Waka was fantastic. She, her character work was excellent. Like her whole demeanor was different. Her new gear was really mm-hmm. good. I thought she was going to stab Tam at one point. She seemed so mad at everybody. I thought she was going to oh, kill yeah. Tam, um, but she took it all out on 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 Nanai, and it was great. Listen, folks, I'm going to take a big L, and I'm okay with it. Waka deserves all the flowers for what she's done over the past three months. All the flowers. She absolutely killed it in the build to this. Fantastically done. This was one of the best stories Stardom has done. Um, The post-match was emotional. Like This this match will probably be, if it's not one for me, at least Stardom-wise, it'll be two. My one also has Kyrie in it, so I'm I'm pretty non original. I really like Kyrie right now. Um, that's also not technically in stardom, so I guess that doesn't count. Yeah, whatever. You get my point. Um, but I I just love what she did and how she she portrays her emotions so well. Mm-hmm. There's a reason she's with Tam. You know? <laughs> There's a reason she does that, and I mean. I, I'm so excited to see what's next. I mean, now she's on a now, now she's on a streak. Now now she's unstoppable. One win was like winning the world title for this woman. It's over now for everyone else, and I can't wait. And and the post match was fantastic. Yeah, I mean everything to do with the post match was was great. Like even if you haven't followed along with everything, I feel like you could easily understand the sheer weight of this moment. Um, and her yeah. with the other Cosmic Angels members on the ramp as the confetti went off was just beautiful. Like, it was so well done. I think my only issue is that the crowd audio for this show was really bad. And it mm. was bad for the next show as well. And I feel like that's something Stardom is doing really poorly right now, is that they're getting these really good crowds, and they're not miking them well. So you don't hear it like these crowd. Like I know people who were there at this show and they're like, we were going crazy for Waka. The entire building was going crazy for Waka. You almost wouldn't know watching the show. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they do like the house shows really well. It's the big buildings that I think they, they need to figure out how to do that. Cause they started running these big buildings consistently when there was only clapping. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So like, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now. Um, but yeah, you gotta, once that's fixed up, like you need that fixed for, um, the grand, is it grand queen? What is it called? All-star grand queen. So yeah, that sounds right. Like you need that fixed because that's going to be a great atmosphere. Um, like the corking on Sunday should be great because you know, they always have those mic'd up, but yeah, I'm with you. Like, I think this match would have been even better had we got to hear all that. And that's it. That's a credit to how good the match was, anyways. Yeah, I mean, you didn't need the crowd fully to to enjoy it because the the emotions and the the stiffness of the wrestlers kind of carried it anyway. And yeah, that's that's a real testament to the work that everybody did. Um, and yeah, like that's that's a cap off to probably the one of the best stories Stardom has told in a long time. Like it's been a while since they've had something hit quite this level. Um, and it, is it shocking it was the Tam Road? You know, a little bit, just a smidge, but I, I, I put a lot of that down to Waka and her performances because she's, she's been great for months now. Mm. Just saying, 
Tam Rhodes gotta get her some respect. Yeah, I mean, listen, the Tam stuff works. I feel like that's you know, it, it works. She's. I, I'm gonna give so much credit to Tam later. I just want to say okay. that. So like, well, you are too. I we already talked about this on Twitter, but you know, good for Waka. She deserved this moment. I know some people are like now hook line sinker. She's winning the goddamn Cinderella. I don't know if we gotta mm. go that far, yeah. but I'm in for the ride. I mean, if if they had if this was a ballsy company, they would. Um, but even I don't think Rossi is that insane, so probably not. Um, that was New Blood. Uh, it was a good show. I think the pay-per-view was definitely of a higher quality than the normal shows, which is what you have to keep doing if you're going to want to get people to buy the shows next time and kind of increase the attendances. Um, seems to be all in on New Blood, given that they've announced the next couple, um, whereas like Stardom Showcase has kind of been limbo. So... Hopefully they do go full in on New Blood and they use it properly because it really lost its way a lot between the debut and now where at first it was focusing on, you know, Maria and Ai Hozan and like Miyu Amasaki was the main character and then they had Linda and Chairman Ram and Waka as the main character. Whereas now there's like the New Blood tag belts are there. And Waka is almost like the ace of this sub brand. So uh, she said she is New Blood. Yeah, actually, like that, that's so true. She had her go Shizaki <laughs> moment. She is she is New Blood. That's badass. Um, so like I feel like you have to run with that now because you kind of have to establish what New Blood is, and there's no better time to do it than now because they really haven't put a firm stamp on what this actually is because it's it keeps changing. Yeah, I, I said this to someone. Like, I think I think it's crazy that like Hanan wasn't on the main show for this, mm. for example. Like, it, isn't she your new blood? Like, isn't isn't that half the purpose here? Um, it, it'll be interesting to see how they do it because I, I I said this to someone, but like, what's your next pull for when you go premium again? Yeah, because the Waka story is done. Mm-hmm. So like, what? What is going to be how you sell this the next time around? And I, I don't know the answer, but um, I'm sure they'll answer it soon enough, and I'll I'll have my opinions on it. But that is the question at hand moving yeah, forward. Yeah, I mean, I trust I trust Rossi. I, I feel like he, out of anybody, will find a way to make it work, even if uh, you know things have to be rushed a little bit. But we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, now, the next show to review is, it was on March 26th. This was the opening round of the Cinderella Tournament. This is also in the Yokohama Budokan. It's at 1,263 fans. Um, I've seen... A lot of people. Yeah, like, I've seen people talk about the number, and there's some people who think it's bad. Um, I, like, I feel like it's a good number. Shout out JD, baby! But yeah, I was on his show the, the, this, this week. I don't, know when it's, I don't know when it's releasing, oh. but I was on his show. We did talk about this number. Um, like, I, I think it's good, because... This is oh, 300 better than the opening round last year. You used to get just barely more than this for the final. Like They gave nothing away. They did the building sure. two days in a row, and you got 1,200 people. Like, it's, it's, it's right. good. Like, when you look at it that way, it's really good. Yep. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, again, you have me talking attendance, which I don't really <laughs> care about, but... Um, I you run a big venue like this twice in a row, you get two thousand packed combined, pretty much. That's not a bad. That's not a bad uh, weekend at the office. You know, it's like that's kind of how I look at it. It's like, all right, you you pack the house for two thousand people around. Um, you had two shows that, I mean, for me were well received. I appreciated both of them. Now that would be, you know, <laughs> that's the funny thing about this one. Some people were talking about the number, and then some people were also just talking about the show as a whole. Mm. And I thought that the show was great. I, had a good I said, I said that to you. I said that to you before it happened, and I remember like you watched through like three matches. You're like, uh oh, <laughs> and then I was like, no, 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 just wait. And then you had a great time. So it's like everyone, everyone's opinions are different, but this, this to me was the closest we will ever get to the one night tournament again. Is a night like this. Yeah, yeah. Like the second half of the show was everything that's great about the Cinderella. 
And then mm -hmm. Saida versus Miyu Masaki was everything that has gone wrong about the Cinderella. You know? <laughs> Which, no offense to them, but on a show with 18 matches, Miyu Masaki doing knee bars on another lower card wrestler is adding nothing to, to the show. Whereas in the second half, it was the it was the top tier wrestler saying, "Okay, here's what I am bringing to the table," which is what Cinderella is all about. I just feel like that opening slog probably did ruin it for some people. Um, Eighteen matches is just too much. I mean, this is a four hour show, and I would say maybe half of it is entrances and you know people's music playing as they leave the ring. It's it's just not fun to watch. I'd imagine in one sitting. Whereas I was able to like skip through because I watched it after. Um, like I can see why, as a show, it might have been a slog, but I had a good time. That's good, and that's good. I, I, I. I uh... Well, I watched it live, and I got to watch the upsets live. Yeah, I got to watch everyone's brackets smash mm -hmm. live. Like that was a great time. I literally watched my bracket die in seconds, and then I got to watch everyone else's because every favorite was gone by the end of the show. It was awesome. Yeah, that's the Cinderella for you. You know, that's the joy of the Cinderella. Exactly. So, yeah, I uh, a lot of the criticism comes from every year when people who are new to stardom are shocked that this isn't the New Japan Cup Women's Edition. And I don't know how, like, every year on this show, we're like, this is not the New Japan Cup. The rules are weird. Shit's gonna get weird. Be prepared, and nobody's ever prepared. Um, and that's that's what this year was. So uh, it was. I don't know. I I enjoyed it because I like the Cinderella, but uh, it, it didn't go down well with some people. But um, we shall go through all of the matches one by one, I guess, because uh, that's usually how this works. In the opener, we had Wakasukiyama beating Lady C in five and a half minutes. Uh, before the show, it was revealed that Rossi wanted Waka to be X. She looked very shocked. The reason is because she wasn't supposed to be X, um, but they managed to to fumble their way into that one. I like to think she was the whole time, even though I know she wasn't. But I like to think she was the whole time. Make makes for a better story. Yeah. Um, her her getting into it and going on to succeed, get her first singles match. You'll love to see it. You know, you'll love to see it. Now, how long? How now? I'm not going to talk myself into her winning this tournament. Hmm. Like some have, but I am going to talk myself into. I'm going to enjoy the ride. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting with her because we don't know where she's going to slot in now. So she could go, like as far as they want in the tournament because that could just be her new Cle spot. Clearly, the main yeah. event. So it's 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 very much like she's one of the most interesting cases because unlike everybody else, we have no idea how they see her, and like they could be making mm -hmm. her into a, a big deal. They could not be. We'll have to wait and see. Um. Third lady C. I'd love to know how her shirt sold. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. That's that'd be a good question. Because they gave her a shirt, and I don't know. I think I think I think people love her, mm. no matter where in the world. So I think I think it means good things coming her way. Let's hope so. Um, this opener was like fine. It was just a good showcase of like Waka leveling up after the the win. Like it wasn't anything special, mm. but she was clearly a different wrestler than she was before, and that was kind of the point of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't really remember too much besides her winning, and that's, I think, all I need to Pretty remember. Pretty much, yeah. So. Um, the next match then was Sai Ida beating Miyu Amasaki in six and a half minutes with a, a Falcon's Arrow. I, I think it's not It's not like an exact Falcon's Arrow. It's, it's a variant of it, but yeah, that was, that was a match that happened. Um, yep. <laughs> All right, I uh, I don't remember anything from it. Was it. valid. Um, the match after that then was Ami Sore beating Yuna Mizumori in five and a half minutes via over the top rope elimination, and um, he briefly did some hot stuff, and then Ami just like threw Yuna over the top rope, and I was like, oh my god, that is a uh, one big display of power. It's kind of beast. I'm not gonna lie nice. to you. Um, it was like I was like, oh, so this is the Ami I I know that is in there somewhere. Um, she just doesn't do the hot shit all the time, and sometimes she doesn't do it as well as I think we'd want her to. Um, this was this was this was the best of the opening three matches. So 
Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, the, the show kind of picked up from there for a little bit. Um, we had Starlight Kid beating, or Starlight Kid and Haruma Umasaki going to a draw when they both fell over the top rope in just under six minutes. And I thought this was enjoyable. I thought it was, uh, there was a lot of good stuff to it. Yeah, heartbreak, folks. Heartbreak for your boy over here. Because I had no idea. Like, I think everyone was between Micah, Starlight Kid, and Natsu Boy, right? I think that was kind of the main three predictions. At least that's what I saw. I could be way off here. Um, and I uh, wasn't well, going to get my hopes up for Natsu Boy. And Micah made sense. But I didn't think she was going to defend or challenge at Fukuoka. Just... They they waited till flashing champions last time. I feel like they might do that again this time. Um, so I went with Starlight Kid because I was like, oh well, you know, she's gonna have her moment eventually. Idiot, freaking idiot! I'm an idiot. I did this two years in a row, people. I picked her twice, and she's been eliminated in the first round twice. I'm never picking her again, ever. Sure, sure thing. Um, no thing about her, Misaki. I don't know. Uh, she had some good forearms. Okay. <laughs> that, go. That's good. Uh, the next match then was uh, the debuting double X of Xena beating Hina in four and a half minutes with Thunderstruck. Um, Xena, <laughs> nobody could have guessed she was going to come in. Uh, she is from the Australian independent scene. She was trained by Robbie Eagles. I was asking a friend from Australia kind of why she kind of disappeared for a few months there before showing up in stardom. And basically it was a lot of like speaking out motivated stuff. Like uh, she was very vocal about it. And some people were saying she named Grayson Waller, but I couldn't really find much about that. Um, but yeah, she's somebody who was like very vocal about it. And for whatever reason, either the promoters stopped using her or she stopped working with promotions that were you know still troublesome but either way uh she wasn't having a good time on the australian indie scene because of her her morals which uh so she's been able to do what mariah may did and kind of get away to japan that means we must cheer her on folks yeah and you know she was interesting because when she walked out there i was like oh I don't, I don't, I don't have like. There's no charisma mm -hmm. exuding off of her, kind of like Mariah May. I was like, oh boy. And then the bell rang, and I was back. I was like, oh, okay, she's good in the ring. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters to me, because she's not going to be the number two in this faction, so it's okay. Yeah, she's a pretty like obvious pin eater for Club Venus, which is fine because she, yep. she, as you said, she doesn't have a lot of charisma. Uh, she kind of all she did was beat. Hina, yeah. So. Like, not like she got a no, that's there. true. Like, her, her whole presentation is almost just ripped off from like Tessa Blanchard and Alex Windsor a little bit. So, she some people th said they thought she was, yeah. And I was like, What? What? Yeah, that, I mean, we haven't seen Tessa in a while, she could look like anything at this stage. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree. I don't, I don't see much charisma there or much of a high ceiling, but she is very solid in the ring. Like there, there was no, you know, like usually when foreigners show up in stardom, there's that adjustment period where they're a step behind or they're a step out of sync with their opponent. But she was solid all the way. Uh, her moves have a lot of impact. I think she's a lot of fun offense. So she's just a really solid addition uh, to Club Venus, especially if she's going to be there to just take the pins for the other two. Yeah, she, um, she did Australian Ninja Warrior. Fun yes. fact. So that's pretty insane. Like that's a that that me that tells you how much athleticism she has. Like I th who is it? Casey Catanzaro. Yeah, she is that's pretty similar. In, uh, WWE. Yeah. Um. I and Ivy Nile did like the Titan Games or whatever oh. it was. Um. The Rock Show. So like she's kind of in that fold of like um a very athletic uh background coming into pro wrestling. I think. And I, I don't know. I, th I think I think she definitely has something at least in ring wise. And if she can click with Mariah and click with Mina, then I'm I'm all I'm game for it. I think uh, I think 
no offense to Zaya, but I think she's better than Zaya already in ring. Oh yeah, yeah, she's she's better than Zaya. Um, the only issue with her is that she's not going to get any focus because the the other X is coming in in two like a week. Yeah. So if that is somebody good, then yeah, Zena's going to get forgot about. Um, I still haven't like tracked down who X could be, and I've looked and I've looked and I've tried. I briefly thought it was Alice Inc, but then I looked Alice Inc up on Facebook, and she's uh, she's booked by some Swedish promotion. So, is it so Lucas? I don't know, cause she just kind of disappeared from wrestling. I don't know if she like works. Any but days. she reacts a lot to Mariah May. Yeah, stuff. they used to be a team. So, yeah, I don't know. You I mean... said earlier though that Stardom follows Danny Jordan now. Oh. Yes, Danny and, Jordan. I, I, I was trying. I'm trying to figure this out, people. I'm, I'm being. I'm doing. I'm using my journalistic instincts here. <laughs> Danny, uh, don't call me a journalist. <laughs> Danny instincts. Jordan doesn't appear to be booked anywhere. Like she hasn't mentioned any dates at all. So maybe it's Danny Jordan. If I'm right, I want all. Okay, the I will. I will make world. sure to point out that you were. Okay. You were right. The other person I pointed out, I don't expect it, but now I hope that she eventually shows up. We don't have to talk. Oh about yeah, her. that's yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I feel like Danny Jordan's a good shout because they follow her and she isn't booked anywhere, which is very strange for WrestleMania week, given that she has ties to AEW and stuff, which usually gets you something. Um, mm. So it might be her, and if it is her, she yeah. probably will outshine Zena because I think Danny Jordan had a little bit of something whenever I've seen her. I want to give credit to Stardom here. I kind of like how they're, do- and, and and it can be hit or miss, but I like how they're doing this, right? Like TJPW has picked the road of, you know, big indie stars from the mm-hmm. U.S. Right, Trisha Dora, Billy Starks, so on and so forth. And Stardom's going with these. Now, I don't want to say, you know, no names per se, but kind of people hidden in the rough of these, you know, different wrestling scenes and. They're kind of making them their own, right? So I think that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, I think we're doing pretty good so far. Zaya Brookside was known, but she was in Stardom before, so I don't really count her. But Mariah May, obviously, you know, we've been talking about her. She's really shining, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not going to, like, jump for joy because I've seen Stardom have some absolute terrible wrestlers come in. Yeah, you, you yeah. know. You know. Um, and ultimately, their use of foreigners is different to TJPW. Like, in Stardom, yeah. like, Mariah May isn't going to get a white belt title match anytime soon. Like, she'd, she'd have to get pushed and improve. Whereas TJPW, Lee Starks walked in and got a, a top title match. So the use of the foreign wrestlers is just so different that TJPW has to hit. Because if TJPW doesn't hit, they've just wasted a, a Princess of Princess title match at Karkin with somebody um whereas yeah. at stardom if somebody's not good you can just job on house show tags and go away you know mm. Mm. very true very true that is uh that is xena uh speaking of mariah may she was in the next match she beat rena with the tombstone pal driver in six minutes and uh this was one of the the matches that stood out as far as like the first half of the card because they had the actual storyline going into it, where, you know, Rena had been like, hey, we speak Japanese here, you old hag, like, speak Japanese. Um, and so Mariah May got to live out the joys of most people by beating up a teenager, so. Mariah May is really yeah. good. Yeah. Just want to say that. Like, her, her drop kick from the top rope is, like, it reminds me of some of the better ones I've seen, like, from a pack for example, and she's, I think she's taller than him, so uh, maybe mm. that's not the best comparison, but um, I, I think she she's set herself apart in a lot of ways, and I think this match with Rena kind of really showed that, because, right, Rena's not a Rena's not a veteran, well, she is, but she is, she's not, like, one of the top stars, so it was, like, how would these two work together, and like you said, I think it, I think it stood out a little bit um, from the rest of the pack, which was good for them. Um, and good for Mariah, who got the win, of course. Yes, definitely. Uh, the next match then also benefited from having a storyline. It was Saki Kashima beating... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know that she changed the name of the tombstone? Uh, yeah. Um, it's the Happily Ever yeah. After. Is that not hysterical? It's fantastic, yeah. She... she was like, she was like screw The Undertaker. Yeah, my she's been calling it that since 
like she first started using it but for some reason stardom's yeah. website never calls it that they just call it a tombstone so i always just say tombstone well that's fair. um that's fair i just wanted to give credit to the yeah, happy no, it's, it's, it's a great it's name funny. um the next match was uh saki kashima beating momo kogo in just under five minutes um yeah, Kogo did a good job of making you think she was going to win because she like debuted the new gear and this was a high speed style match so you thought she could get the roll up on on, that, on Saki Kashima but Saki being Saki she got the win in the end and uh, I, I enjoyed it for what it was Pretty crazy Momo Kogo's in the walker roll now huh? <laughs> Yeah she's uh, I mean you know she's 37 you gotta I know, I know, I know. Uh, Saki Kashima is great. That that is my takeaway from this. She is um, doing great character work, doing great work all around. I'm excited for a high speed match. I'm excited for her and uh, her big rematch on God, Saturday. That's gonna be so great. Um, next match of the show then was Mirai beating Hanan in seven minutes with a Miramari submission. Um, I thought this was good, but they didn't play into judo as much as i would have wanted to cry <laughs> deal with it i like it, okay. that's what matters. I, it was also very highly anticipated for me these are two of my favorites but uh no i get i get that i get that i think i think they had some creativity and that's you know i think mariah always has creativity in her matches but like hanan doing the um the arm bar from like on the apron, I thought that was cool. I never expected her to do the hanging arm bar. Um, you know, the, I think with these two, we're gonna see them wrestle so many more times in the future. So, like, they're just gonna try new stuff each time. We'll see what works. I do hope they bring more judo into it though, because I do think that will benefit their matches greatly. But you know, they only had so much time, so I can't really get too upset. But the super lariat that Mariah's doing now, oh, it, Mariah's That's lariats are beast. Yeah, she she because she just swings, and if she accidentally hits them wrong, it still yeah, looks good. Yeah, and it's you know it's on you. You either duck or you get hit. That's 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 the way. <laughs> um, the match after that then was Tekla beating Koguma in just under seven minutes with a roll up. And this was this was kind of a mix between high speed stuff and kind of shtick. Um, at one point, Koguma did the spider mm -hmm. pop up, and you could visibly see. Her entire body go. Oh no, that was a bad choice. So I can relate. <laughs> um, Koguma's just shtick now. And then, like once in a while, she'd be like, "Oh yeah, I can wrestle really well too." Um, but Tekla, Tekla's kind of she's clicking right now. I think she um, she's really done all the work she's needed to get herself one back from injury. Right, that's that's the toughest part. But I think she's like in ring her best form right now and i'm really excited to see what she has in store because i i think she's worthy of a spot whether it be going further in this tournament or just the swa title like she's worthy of something yeah there there's something there for tecla um that you know her injury kind of last year derailed a lot for her um and she can pick it up now because she's she's been this good for for a while, and uh, I like I think this yeah. tournament more than anything is a good chance to give her a run. Yeah, I can't wait for her five stars. Oh yeah, I, I was so upset that we didn't get her in that last year. It was <laughs> it was so disappointing. Um, Who replaced her? I wasn't Momo Kogo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was a, bit of a downgrade. Can't lie to you, but you know oh. it's it's all right. Um, the match after that then was Natsuko Tora beating Raka in just under six minutes with a Swanton bomb. I really enjoyed this. Like they were just trying to beat the crap out of each other. Uh, even before the bell rang, Raka like put her through a table. Cause why the hell not? And they were just going crazy. Um, and then Natsuko was just like, "Get, it. I, I'm winning. I'm beating your ass." When will everyone admit that Natsuko is? at her best right now like she is she, that she trusts that knee more than ever um and she's having like killer showings right now and uh rock is obviously you know she she was the standout of that tag with seven up and you know deservedly so gets that praise so they're both like 
because of their tag team and I think Momo and Starlight Kid, you know, changing away to Tai while she was gone, it's allowing Natsuko to be a wrestler again, right? And I think that's probably why I enjoyed this so much. I mean, that table spot was disgusting mm. in a good way. It was absolutely nasty. Like that that should not Yeah, happen. it it, it, it like <laughs> it didn't like... break. She just physically went through part of it. It was horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, that was yeah. that was, was so nasty. Good. Uh, the match was really good. Rocco doing some of the best work of her career is so out of nowhere. <laughs> I can't lie to you, but I'm here for it. Natsuko being back was the savior that she needed. Yes, yeah. And I, I, Dylan had kind of said that for a long time. He was like, without Natsuko, she's just kind of adrift in the wind. Um, and yeah, ever since Tora came back, you've like there's been a bit of a renewed passion to, to Rocco. Um, so, you know, good for her. And uh, it was nice to see Tora. Mm. I thought Rocco would win, but, you know. Tor is Tor is a pretty cool option as well. Yeah, now we're getting Tor and Tan. Yeah. So I'll be Dylan, be like, remember that mm-hmm. one match that one time from a long time ago between those two? That was really great. Yeah, they get to do yeah. that again. You're welcome, Dylan. <laughs> I don't remember what it was from. I never somehow five remember. Star. But I'm excited for you. Yeah. The five star. Well, Cinderella instead. Mm-hmm. But the, the they should. Yeah, that, that should be fun. Uh, speaking of fun, the next match was Siri beating Tomoka Inaba in seven minutes with a white tiger. Uh, as probably one of the best matches of the show, depending on what you you like. Uh, like they started with a, a UWF style trade off uh, test of test of wits or whatever, and then they just started kicking the shit out of each other. It was fantastic. This was everything I hoped it would be. It was everything I expected it to be. Like. You know, Shuri's fantastic. I don't need to talk about her anymore. We we yeah. know how good she is. Toki Naba, she is ready for that next step. I need her to drop this JTO mm-hmm. belt as soon as possible. I'm sick of waiting. I'm done. Aoi, get the damn <laughs> belt so that we can have so that we can have uh Inaba here. I'm I'm expecting a five star run out of her that's going to be truly phenomenal. Um I think I think this was just kind of another way to showcase her while taking the loss and expected loss. At that. Yeah, I mean, you can get away with her losing in this tournament, um, especially with a showing like this. <laughs> yeah, it's not like she lost to Waka. She lost <laughs> yeah, to Shuri. Yeah, which is, you know, Siri is like the EO nowadays, so she's the big bargaining chip. That's crazy. That's just a crazy yeah. thing to think about. It's true. It's, it's fantastic. Crazy. Rossi does not miss. When he picks free agents, he's, he's like... 10 for 10. He's, he's, uh, the, op- he's the opposite of the yeah, New York Knicks who uh, continue to astound people. That was an absolute ruthless dunk. I mean, team. listen, man. You, <laughs> you're you right. Uh, no, you're right. It's just hey, like a supermax to Jalen Brunson who's like at best. Yeah, I mean, nice. you know. Not no. worth that. Yeah, he's like nice. a number two guy. It's you don't pay. You don't pay your number yeah, two guy a super yeah, max yeah. though. So I don't know. Um, well, the Celtics might. So I. Uh, <laughs> All right, you guys losing Jalen. But yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely losing. Poor he's thing. Definitely losing. They 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 tried to trade him for Kevin Durant. I'm surprised. <laughs> that is fair. That is valid. Oh, dude, imagine Kevin. Kevin. Kevin's just like he's chilling. I like him. At least we have. Jason that is valid. Yeah, the very inefficient Pat Stutter. Pat Stutter. <laughs> Hey, 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 this is everything you could ever ask for from a Hazuki and Azumi match. They just did high-speed goodness. Fantastic thing. I loved it. Do, do people understand now why I want them to just have a regular high-speed title match? Like, they're so good together. It it's It's one of the best combos in stardom today. And this was as, like you said, it was as good of a match as they're going to have. This was probably my favorite match of the night, truthfully. And it was five minutes, and it ended in a time, and it ended in a goddamn you know over the top rope draw. But the way they did it was so perfect that it's like, ah, well, that's cool then. Like, uh, just 
Why does their match with Mercedes have to be on a New Japan show? Why can't it be somewhere else? It would be so... It's it's going to be good because I watched them do this in five minutes, but it could be unbelievably great if they had it anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like New Japan might be the best place to have it because they'll want to have it. Well, How dare you? They're going to want to have a match really different from everything else, so they're going to embrace this aspect of it a lot more. The more ashy, That's true. if worthy, eye-popping kind of stuff. Because you don't get a lot of that on a New Japan show. Yeah, I guess we, I guess, I guess New Japan forgets how great Mayu and Kyrie was. Jerks. It's just Gato. He's just. I'm, coming for, your, I'm coming for you, Gato. You're done. Ugh. You're finished. You're finished. You lost Jay White, and now you have, no. Get out of here, buddy. You're done. Using Jay White is a bit of a positive in his book, though. I don't know. I can't. Uh, it's sure? not. He. It's not for him clearly because. He, he, I don't know. He's he just he just puts Sonata in a main event spot. Mm. Clearly, he's losing his mind. <laughs> that is valid. Um, Anyone listening to this that likes Sonata, including Dylan, you're not listening to this, but you love Sonata. Oh yeah, like, I forgot. The, Sonata joined Dylan's favorite faction. That guy must be living life. That's yeah. Dylan likes five guys. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, the next match on the show. Just five guys. Just five guys. Sorry. Five guys in the yeah. burger chain. Just five guys in the faction. I didn't actually okay. say that correctly. That's, that's great. Um, anyway, <laughs> my Sakurai eliminated Julia <laughs> in one of the upsets of the tournament uh, by over the top rope. This was this went six minutes, and it was great. They were slapping the shit out of each other. Uh, I don't know what Julia's doing lately, but she's just fucking with everybody that's in the ring with her, and it's great. And uh, my Sakurai... Everybody needs to admit that they were wrong on my Sakurai, except me. She is so good now. Julia is wrestling out yeah. of her mind right now. Like, like she has decided, every match I have, I am going to destroy my opponent, and I want them to destroy me. I watched the uh, Melt Tear versus Jamaica mm-hmm. and Julia tag the other day from the uh, KBS Hall show, and she and they just traded headbutts. I was like, what are we... What? we doing why why are you doing this it's a regular tag this is about Hameka's retirement road and we got julia destroying her brain and it she's just phenomenal she had a match with my sock right here that i thought was truly excellent um my yeah credit to my sock right she's really stepping up um her promo after was maybe the funniest thing i've ever seen uh when i saw the mm. translations i was like what is what is she talking about like what I was like, wow, the wind was so big, she needs to talk. And then she talked about nothing that I expected. I expected, like, something crazy. And she was like, no, everyone cheer for me. Yay. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Um, but the, the superplex to get the wind, oh, that dude. was nice. So Somebody's like, the, the Cinderella, uh, for as much as it's, like, 10-minute time limits are easier on the body or whatever, some of these spots are ridiculous. <laughs> like, you're just getting thrown to the floor mm-hmm. to get eliminated. It is absurd. Uh, yeah, credit, credit to Julia. Yeah, this one oh, was that nice. finish, though, was so clever. And is one of the reasons I love the Cinderella, because mm-hmm. my Sakurai was like, well, I went under the rope, and Julia went over the rope. So I can mm-hmm. do this, and I'll win. Like, that is, that is so galaxy-brained. It, it should just be normal-brained, but no one's no. that smart, I guess. So... Um, we only get it once in a while, but yeah, she, she did a great job. Um, this, you know, you know, what's funny in watching it in the moment, this ended up not being the biggest upset of the night strictly because of where everything went in terms of where I expected favorites to be and stuff, but it is the biggest upset in terms of like, this is my Sakurai beating the world champion. Definitely, yeah. And, um, if that makes sense, yes. if that and, makes uh, sense. I mean, I, I feel like this could be the start of something with my Sakurai if they want it to be. I don't know if they do, but giving her promo time and the win over Julia, it kind of made me perk up a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her go far, but I don't think it's a guarantee either. Um, I, I mean... Her versus Waka semis? Maybe, yeah. Who knows? No. Um, match after that then was... This is one of the more predictable results. Um, it was Natsupoi and Mina Shirakawa going to a double elimination. Um, it worked this like a tease for a white belt match. Like everything about this said white belt. The exchanges right out of a white belt match. The the, the finish 
uh, to continue it, and the, the exchange afterwards, white belt match. Um, so I like I called it the second the brackets were announced. I assume Natsupoi will be the first challenger for Mina based off of this result. Yeah. Yeah, Fukuoka main event, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Um, Mina, Mina and Natsupoi, and then the Cinderella can challenge maybe after. Um, yeah, it, it was predictable by the time we got here. I was like, okay, well, Natsupoi's mm. not winning this. These two, these two whole stories, like, draw, draw. Um, so I, I'm all good with this leading to an eventual uh, title match between the two. I think they can have a really good one when they actually get to go all out and not, uh, you know, wrestle to it. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's very few better ways to get your reign off than with a defense against Natsupoi, who, for as weird as she's been lately, is still one of the better wrestlers in stardom. So, um. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, I want to say this about Mina because I've been, I've been one of the harder people on Mina. I can admit that. Um, but she, uh, she figured it out. Mm-hmm. She has checked every box she needs to to be a Wonder Stardom champion. Um, she, she's gone away from the like heelish yeah. vibe that she had at one point because now she's just like back mingling with the Cosmic Angels for now. And I was like, that's good. You can you can do the heelish edgier stuff after you win the title. That's fine. I don't care. But people want to cheer you on. Be a little more babyface, and that seems to be what. Yeah, she's doing. she's great. Like uh, ever since the GP, she's just found another level. And um, I didn't know if she'd work as a faction leader or as a main eventer, but she she does. Like it, it's a natural fit. So fair play to Rossi for seeing that one. Yeah. Um. The next match on the show then was Saya Kamatani and Mayu Utani also going to double elimination in just four minutes. Um, they keep teasing this match and never going all in on it. I wonder what they're saving it for. They like they have me. to be saving it for something. They maybe IWGP Women's Champion. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't seem like one you'd give to New Japan. Hey, Saya's the queen. Of New Japan show, don't true. you forget that she was on like mm. all of them up until the yeah, title. That's was true. Um, I don't know. Like it's it's kind of strange though because they did this in the GP as well. They had like a sprint mm. with a sudden finish, and this was also a sprint with a yeah. sudden finish that was really cool. Um, like if I didn't know any better, I'd say they're saving it for a big big match. But then Saya, like Saya, is about right. to lose her belt. Uh, Mayu's belt is half New Japan. And you don't want to give this away to New Japan. So when are you doing it? You wouldn't well, think so. Yeah, I don't know. So. I feel like this is a big starter match. Like, I don't... Uh... Well, I will say, Flashing Champions is the pay-per-view that every title's defended. Yeah, but that'll be, my, that'll be Mayu and Sari. Be crazy. That's well, what you think. Yeah. I don't know. It could be. I don't know. I mean, Sari hasn't walked in the door yet, so I don't know. Maybe I, I'm expecting it to be sooner rather than later, too. But if it's not there, maybe that's where Sai is. Or maybe they're just not doing the match for some reason, and we'll never know. I mean, that's possible. That's that's certainly possible. Maybe, they, maybe they're just like, nah, we're not good together. And it's like, why? You uh, absolutely are. <laughs> Mayu and Sai. You know, it could be something they're keeping for the next time Mayu gets one of the top two belts, because that's going to happen eventually. They're going to put one of them back on her. Um, so maybe that's when you're saving for that, is because so. uh, she's wrestled most of everybody else, whereas with Saya, it'll be fresh. So maybe that's it. But mm. yeah, this was another nice teaser of what uh, a proper match between them could be, but we don't know when we're going to get it. Um, My, Mayu's feet hit the yeah, floor last. Yeah, they, some of these finishes were kind of like, hmm, yeah, I don't know about that, Chief. Um, the next match on the show then was Mom Watanabe beating Micah in just under six minutes via over the top rope elimination. Um, this is pretty solid. Um, most importantly, though, it completely destroyed my bracket because I thought Micah was a lock. I was like, <laughs> Micah's winning. It makes all the sense <laughs> in the world. And then, boom, Mom Watanabe wins. So, yeah, I, I was in my whole. Uh... FTW feeling of like I don't I don't want anyone's mm. bracket to be right now. If my bracket's 
ruined. I don't want anyone's. And then Momo hit that meteora, and I saw Micah fall to the floor, and I was like, maximum yeah. chaos. Wonderful. Uh, what, a, what a crazy show. Just think about that. Like, all of the favorites that anyone had that i saw anyone say oh, yeah like God. the only one left that anybody had even mentioned is like mariah may which is absurd yeah and i decided i decided after she won she might be the favorite and i was like kind of kidding but now yeah I'm not. i mean it's it's <laughs> it's either her tecla or momo i feel like at this stage because mariah well some some galaxy brains got tam, tam i saw that Shout out to uh, to yeah. And the Tam thing to me is the, the final is a week before the big pay per view, so you'd only have like three days to sell tickets off of whatever stipulation she does. Sure. So I don't, I don't see that yeah. happening. Um, whereas you know, with with uh, Tecla, Mariah, or Momo, you could set things up that won't that either you can sell tickets to or that you're not going to sell tickets with anyway. So. I mean, that's my only problem with the Tam theory. I don't see Momo winning just because I think it would be weird. <laughs> like, she wins Cinderella five years later or six years later, whatever it is. Yeah. I guess. I'm not getting my hopes up either. I feel like okay? we're bound, not getting my we're bound to eventually have somebody win it who isn't elevated and is just a, a good challenger for a champion. Um and Momo yeah. versus Julia is a pretty easy avenue for that because that's a big feud for Julia. Mm. And if they save it for Flashing Champions, mm -hmm. that's a pretty big match for Flashing Champions. Like that's an Ota award. So I think it would sell. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. I, if it if it's a challenge for the world title this time around, then yeah. yes, it will be Momo. Um, but if it's not, it will be someone getting elevated because otherwise, there's no one else to pick from. That so is, it has that to be true. someone getting elevated. That that well, that is the I current mean, bracket. Technically, like, Siri no is still points. in the tournament, but nobody seems to think she's winning. So she's she's gonna get the Saki it's, Kashima treatment, folks. Yeah. I'm prepared, and I can't um, wait for it. The main event of this show, because we do have to preview the, the next rounds anyway, so we'll just go through this. Uh, oh, no, not the main event. Uh, the next match was the semi-main event. It was Utami and Nanai wrestling to a 10-minute time limit draw that saw both women eliminated. Um, they have something with Nanai versus Utami. There's just something like fireworks just flow when they're wrestling. And we've yet to see the full extent mm -hmm. of what it could be. Because even this wasn't a full-on match. Because uh, I find Utami draws are very good in that they just kind of end, right? Like, they just naturally... The bell rings and she's like, ah, shit, I ran out of time. Um, so this almost ended mid-match. But there, there really is something there between them. Yeah, and the knife's good again, folks. Shocked. Done bamboozled um i'm interested to see if they ever actually run the real singles match between these two um this was always going to be a draw if anyone thought otherwise you're nuts well, i i thought <sighs> Utami would win I, I thought i was like this is I how you get utami out oh you yeah, thought, utami I thought they were was gonna, gonna win? oh no i thought nanai was gonna win i thought they were gonna do nanai and micah oh. to, uh, to draw for the next show uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't have been bad, but crazy, I guess <laughs> no. neither of them won, so yeah. I guess you, <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, no, I always thought this was gonna be a draw just because I was like, well, that's that how you get fair. a Tommy up. Bye bye, see you later. It was a good match, very good match. Best. Uh, not, it's so weird. I've tried to I've tried to figure out what the hell they're gonna do with Tommy at this damn show, and she's probably not gonna do much. Um. But like this weekend's her last chance, I think, to get a signature yeah. for that show. That show being because with prominence, I was like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go crazy brain here, put my tinfoil hat on, and hope that it's like her and Susie face off or her and Risa Sarah face off. That's not gonna happen, but I'm trying. I mean, at this stage, she might just do the fool much, but I have no idea. Oh yeah, that's possible. That's what a yeah. Hazuki stuck doing. So well, you know, the very famous Fua. Saya was uh, last yeah, time, it was right? Saya and Hina. Yeah, so that could be what Otami does. Yeah. That's not a bad spot for. Her. 
Um, we won't get to see it for a while. So I don't think that'll affect them this time. I look forward. Uh, I feel like it's on the main card, it was said. So I don't know. Yeah. I really hope it is. Yeah, because mm. it's not the debut anymore. Yeah, so, so I, I don't think it'll be a TV commerce thing. So well, I, yeah, I'd be a bit more confident. Not a bad spot, then, if, that, if that's the case. Oh, definitely not. A bad not. spot at all to be in there. With yeah, because the I, I saw a tweet the other day that was like she was uh, like on a Google Pixel ad in Japan, like during a big like game, you know, baseball or something. Yeah, like she's she's like she's famous, famous. Yeah, she's like crazy she's celebrity. She's really big. So, uh, yeah, she's a good get, and anybody around her is gonna get a lot of attention. Um, I I I talked to someone who went over there recently, over to Japan, and he said like how she's yeah. just on everything, like just her face. They just put her everywhere. I'm mm. like, that's crazy. That she was like, yeah, I'm gonna wrestle. <laughs> Can't wait till she's out. Hell yeah. That is, that is a base future. Um, speaking of base, though, the main event of the show was Tam Nakano beating Hameka in nine minutes with a violet screwdriver. This was awesome. They just went for it from the word go. They were hitting each other. They were doing crazy shit. They were... Uh, the the finish was absurd. Like that violet screwdriver looked like it was putting Hameka into an early retirement. She took that one full force. It was amazing. You know, we, we don't talk about enough how uh, how Tam has just like ever since the match with Julia has been made, she just entered like, oh, I'm gonna I'm going to go on a murderer's row in every match that I'm in from here on out. She she poor Hameka. Like Hameka's like, oh, I'm retiring, no injuries, and ever since then, she's been dropped mm-hmm. on her head like seven times with like Chihiro spiked her with the german um and then and then tam's here dropping her on her head with the violet screwdriver uh yeah this was this was a great choice for the main event um i don't know there's something there's something about tam and julia they somehow have built this match back up for me to be super interested in it i didn't think they were going to be able to do it i'm mm-hmm. stupid for thinking that uh they are go <laughs> they are going to somehow hurt each other more than they did the last time the last, the last time being the five star final. I'm not even talking about the, uh, oh yeah, dra- Dream Cinderella. No, this is they they destroyed each other in that final in 15 minutes, and this is going to be uh, all out war. It's going to be fan. Yeah, Tom. Tom is uh, amazing, and uh, you know a lot of people. The retirement <laughs> yeah. road, baby. Yeah, I mean, I, if people are talking about it, and I, I think we would. The retired yeah. Tam. Uh, <laughs> I, I think people would miss her a lot more than they let on. She was she's a real talent. Um, yeah, I will. no, I mean I, I will too. Like you can't replace Tam Nakano, and matches like this are why. So, no. um, no, she is. She is like the, and people might get mad at me, but she is like the oh yeah, toast. I've called her on this. I mean, she's she she wins all the popularity polls. Like they the fans love her. You know. Hmm. Fans love her. She's the main eventer mm-hmm. anytime they need her. Um, I almost feel like she needs to yeah. win. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think she team. might be Julia as well. Oh, yeah, it's, I love it's it. Fun. It's, it's great. It's Stardom, fun. It's Stardom's rocking, man. Um, it's, speaking of rocking, though, we've got three shows to preview, and two of them look really fun. Uh, the first one is on April 1st. Uh, this is in this is in car or no this is in the light cube Utsonomia for the second round of the Cinderella. So I've never I've never heard of this venue before, and it can sit like two thousand people. It's a big hall, so it should be fun. Um, in the opener though, we have Azumi and Hina versus Momokogo and Aya Sakurai. So or Sakura. So uh, I look forward to seeing what Sakura does here with Azumi because uh, that that seems like a good pairing. Yeah, I'm gonna probably watch every like yeah. new rookie match for a while because I don't know. You like to see these people grow. I'm mm-hmm. I'm definitely intrigued by it. Um, sure. That's not hard because she's the only one on this show. Um, the next, yeah, the, they're, yeah, they're the, the schedules are a bit weird. Um, but the next match is this is a fun one. This is Amisore, Lady C, and Yuna Mizumori versus Julia, Micah, and Himeka. They decided let's put all of the hosses together. 
That's kind of yeah. that's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really fun. Yeah. What a random uh, card. I I imagine that's the exciting. DDM team wins because that's they are the top three. Yeah. Yeah, you would think so. I would be shocked if a team in the universe that is well. Lady C yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. The oh, this is uh, yeah, I like this one. Uh, Utami Hayashita, Sai Kamatani, and Miyu Amasaki versus Natsupoi, Mina Shirakawa, and Waka Skiyama. So, I feel like Waka's team is gonna get the win, and it's it's strange that I could say that they're, they're gonna That's pick crazy. Kevin. That That's is so crazy. fun! Oh my god! A few, you know, a few weeks ago they had um, Mina and Poi yeah. and Mariah team up. And they were excellent. And then they had Mina and Mariah and Tam team up. And I was like, why are one of these trios never going to win the yeah. Power Spells? So I was like, this is mm-hmm. this is great. And uh, now oh, at least yeah. we have Waka. Waka, um, Waka is going to win stuff now. And it's not something I'm prepared <laughs> yeah. for. Uh, her first loss again is going to be a, a real coming back down moment. We're all going to go, ah, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of coming down moments, we have... Uh, Mayu Utani, Hazuki, Koguma, and Hanan versus Momo, Nabe, Starlight Kid, Raka, and Rina. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so tired bad. of the Italian stars. It's just. Well, I mean, that's just how this goes. But like, I don't know. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. My Mayu does <laughs> nothing true. anymore. Um, we then have nothing but Cinderella tournament matches. Uh, we have a second round match. It is Siri versus Saki Kashima. And I feel like Saki's going to win that. Yes, it's all about the role player, the ultimate role player of professional wrestling, Saki Kashima, oh, yeah. getting the win here. She, I hope she oh, gets her so in amazing, seconds. yeah. Um, the match after that is another second round contest. It's Natsuko Tora versus Tam Nakano. Um, I feel like Tam will win there. I have. No idea. I guess I'll pick. I'll pick Tam. I guess because she she probably is going to carry a lot of momentum at least a little further. Um, mm. Should be really good. Yeah, though. I mean it's it's uh they they do they did great work once upon a time as Dylan likes to remind us, and uh, they're both doing well now. So I feel like that's going to be a fun match. Um, we then have another second round match. It is Tekla versus Zena. And uh, I'd imagine Tekla wins. I so hope I, Tekla honestly, wins. Yeah. Um, so that's my that's how <laughs> yeah. I predicted. Um, I the match after that then is a third round match. It's Marai versus Saya Ida. This has to be Saya. This has to be Ida getting yeah. the first win over Marai. Just has to be. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Come on. Happen. No, 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 no. Saya Ida doesn't get to win. No, 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 no. You gave her a Miyu Abasaki win. That was enough. She got pretty far last year. That was enough. Was she even in it? Not happening. Not she... not on my watch. Yeah, she was in it. She got um she got pretty far actually. I think uh Yeah, she oh. won like once or twice actually. I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh most people do God. when it comes to Saya Ida's <laughs> Um I think I think it should be yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be good. We know these two That's are true. awesome together. Um, give them six minutes of just Hassan, and then yeah, yeah. I think I think Mariah wins. He thinks the Saida wins. Betting on Saida is usually not the smart. Okay, choice, all right. I'll let you have this uh, then we have the last match. It's another third round match. It's my Sakurai versus Mariah May. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of unpredictable. Uh, if they want to go shitty, then they could uh they could have them draw, and I think that'll put Saki Kashima through to like the semis or the final. Um. No, would it? I'll put Momo right. to the semis, actually. So that's beast. I love your, I love your plan. Yeah, <laughs> I think probably. Mariah. Wins. That that would make a lot more. Sense. Mariah versus Momo yes, is like, like very that. tempting. Also, yeah, like, that sounds a like a fun one. match. Um, then we have a Cork and Hall show on the second of April, and this is uh quite a mishmash of stuff between the the remaining third round matches of the Cinderella and the quarterfinal matches of the Cinderella. Now, Stardom is being a horrendous company, and they have not listed the potential matches. So, oh boy, what do I do? Um, oh, I got you. I got you. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, so it will be. You're looking for the Cinderella match, yeah. right? I'm not I'm not crazy here. Okay, so it'll be either Mariah May or My Sakurai versus Momo Watanabe. Okay. 
So would you like to pick that one, and I will go to Reach? Yeah, so, I mean, I guess Momo would win. She'd beat Mariah. Give her a big spot on the final night. Not a bad yeah. idea. Um, oh, crap. Momo, Mariah. I'd like Momo to win, obviously. Mm. I just, I'm trying to figure out where this push could be for Mariah. Um, I will go with Mariah May. Why not? All right, okay. I, I, I believe in her. Let's, let's get crazy. And then it'll be either Shuri and Saki versus Waka Tsukiyama. Okay, so we're going Saki versus Waka. <laughs> Waka should win that. Yeah. Waka should definitely win. Yeah. Because yeah, that would be really fun. Get Waka semis, baby. Let's go. Dude, Waka <laughs> versus heel Momo is so perfect in the semifinal. That would, I, I hope that's the match now. That would be yeah. perfect. Wow. Now, I, I want that now. But <laughs> um, if I was to pick, yeah, Waka. I, I, think, I don't think Saki's going to the semifinals. Nah. So well, that would be kind of crazy. Uh, next match would be Ami Saray versus the winner of Tam Nakano and Natsuko Toro. Mm, yeah, so that would be Ami versus Tam. I guess you'd go Tam again. I feel like Tam might make a run. I do not want Ami Saray winning this, so <laughs> whoever beats, whoever wins the match, I pick. Okay, that is valid. And then it'll be either Tekla and Xena versus... Mirai and Sai Ida. So I have Tekla versus Ida. And I'd yes. probably go with Tekla. Yeah. Um, I have Tekla and Mirai. If the final were... If the semis had Tam in it, I would go with Tekla. Mm. If it has Ami or Natsuko in it, I think maybe Mirai. Yeah. That's the difficulty of predicting this. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. I need I need the first one to happen, then I can give you my idea. But uh that's how I think it would play out. Which would create a really interesting final four no matter how you slice. Yeah, I mean Waka Momo Mirai and maybe Ami or, or Tora or something. Definitely an interesting four. Oh, that's kinda great. Yeah. That would be great. Momo and Waka would be great, and then Natsuko and like Mirai. Mm. I don't know if they do that though. Right. It's, it's it's so weird this year's tournament. Like it's hard to have any grasp on what they're gonna do. Maybe Tekla really is just bringing back the SW. She guy. might do. She might. I, I feel like that's a possibility. I wouldn't even be upset. Yeah. She called her. She called her shot. I wouldn't even be upset. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Like, yeah. I'm just gonna be champion. <laughs> I'd do it. I mean, why not wish to be champ? That'd, that'd be kind of sick. Yeah. yeah. Kind of sick. And she could get her leather dress. Oh yes. Which is like. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Tekla's wearing this whole thing. I wouldn't be sad. Yeah. I wouldn't be sad. Hey, if Tekla, Tekla had her rocks. Herself the, the run of life. Feels great. Um, but that is the end of the the uh, tournament matches on that show. We have two more matches. Uh, the first of which is a Himeka Retirement Road tag match. It's Himeka and Miyuki Takase, officially representing Nomads, by the way. So that's an interesting to note. Um, versus Natsupoi mm -hmm. and Kakaru Sekiguchi. So. This is a, uh, a throwback to Actress Girls. I believe Himeka said when the first Actress Corkin happened, this was a match that happened. I believe this was like the exact pairings because Himeka and Takase. I'll believe yeah, it. Yeah, because Himeka and Takase were obviously a team on the indies before yeah. um, Takase or Himeka got signed. So it would make sense they were on the same team. Folks, we're getting Miyuki Takase a starter ring. We're just gonna we're just gonna take the massive dub yeah. here and call and it. A day, okay? Not I, don't care. I don't care. She has not to play. Like that is Oh my god. That's great. Uh because because obviously Hameka's gonna match up with Sekiguchi. That's what she wanted. Yes. Like that's the match she asked yeah. for. So that means we're getting Poi and Takase doing the damn mm -hmm. thing. Oh, if they want this to go 30, yeah, like let's do it. I'm let's go. <laughs> like let's just keep going, man. Yeah, let's go all the way. Yeah. Let's go all the way. That's that's what yeah. I hope. The, if it's, I don't, is it a 30 minute? I have no match? idea. It's probably not. No, I'm going to guess it's 15, so go all yeah. the way. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you'd probably want to. I don't think you can have, well, Takase does lose all the time, so you could have her lose. <laughs> well, that's me. <laughs> well, because I, I was going to say, oh, you can't have anyone lose. You're going to make no. her lose. To make her loses all not the time. Really. She's won a lot more than she's lost in this retirement thing. It's very funny. No, 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 no. She lost. Against Poi once. And she and, beat uh, Poi. Julia. Well, that was a tag. Oh, shit, mm -hmm. this is a tag. Yeah. I don't know. I 
in my brain, I would think Takase has more say than Sekiguchi, but probably well, not. Because Takase Sekiguchi has the Oz Academy, you know, swag. So, you know, it's, it's so sad that Takase just has no say anywhere. Yeah. So, why am I thinking she had any say in no Star? Idea. You're crazy. Whatever. I'm, I'm just happy she's uh, here. This is also the show that Kyrie is revealing her mystery woman, which I feel has gone completely under the radar. Um, Sayori Anu! Yeah, I think we've all figured out it's Sayori now. Like, Ice Ribbon combusting and taking the belt off her made it go, oh, okay, yeah, it is Sayori. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. So that's fun. Yeah, the process of elimination made it pretty You think easy. she'll show up after this? Because uh, Natsupoi was, because yeah, she was also involved in Actress Girls. Uh, Sayori Anu was champion there for like mm-hmm. two years or something before Takase got it. Yep. So. If I get my way. I have no idea what the match is supposed to be, so I actually don't know what my way is. I've been trying to figure that out. Is it going to be a tag match? Are they going to be a trio? Because listen, listen, to me. prominence versus Kyrie Natsupoi and Sayori Anu is the way I've decided. Nice. I decided that today. It's not going to happen, but it's absolutely the way. Very much so. But it's probably going to be a tag. Be so um, well, we have a lot. We have enough. Yeah, time. that's true. But it'll probably be a tag anyway. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a fun retirement road match. It's really cool to see beginning get to team up again because uh, like they've been teaming since I like, first got into the, the Joshi and everything. So it's it's nice to see them again. Um, then we have an artist. Roth, Rothy should offer a contract to. Uh, oh, obviously, yeah. I mean, listen, get get save her, save her. Um, Please. We then have the main event, which is an artist of Stardom Championship match. It's Risa Sera, Suzu Suzuki, and Kurumi Haragi versus Utami Haishishta, Sayaka Matani, and Azumi of Queen's Quest. Um, I don't know what they're going to do here because I don't see prominence losing them this close to Yokohama. But like that is the Queen's Quest A team. Like, who do you even pin? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Unless it goes to a draw because they do like to have these artist title matches yeah. go to draws lately. Well, Utami's a dweeb. She can lose. <laughs> Utami is a dweeb. Did you really just utter that sentence? That is absurd. Well, she has nothing to do. Well, hear, hear me out here. Hear me out here. Hear me out here. Um, She can get pinned because Suzu pins pretty much everyone. So, there you go. Um, I'm not buying it. I assume? I think you should. <laughs> okay. Um... I assume there'll be more matches added to this show because like nobody is on it. Like none of the the, the debut taunts or anything are on this show, which is very strange. Um, now I have to think. No, no, no. Now you have me thinking. How does this match end? Besides, oh, it's a draw. a draw. It's definitely a draw. Like, they, 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 that's what these that's belts okay. do. I mean, they're, they're all very talented. I'm not going to be. Upset. That is fair. Um, then we have a third show. This is happening next Thursday, but. I'm going to preview it anyway because it's just easier that way. Um, this is in the Sendai Pit. It's on the 6th of April. Um, the opener is Mai Sakurai versus Aya Sakura. So presumably Mai is going to win there. Cool. Then we have Lady C and Hanako versus Starlight Kid and Fukigen Death. Um, sure. <laughs> I assume Fukigen rolls up one of the tall ladies and it's like, aha, you're too tall. I rolled you up. Yeah, Fukigen literally comes in to mm-hmm. win now. That's it. It's a crazy, crazy thing. But shout out to Kaori to having wins finally. <laughs> um, we then have the uh, debut of X, who is a member of Club Venus. It's Mariah May, Xena, and X versus Koguma, Hanan, and Saeeda. That's probably a Club Venus win. They'll probably have the new person win. X wins. Yes. Who's X? No, no Jordan, idea. I guess. Um... We then have Suri, Mirai, Amisori, and Konami. Just Konami showing up a lot lately for no reason. <laughs> She's coming back, I'm telling you. Um, versus. She's having a match with Julia. What do you say? Ich? Yeah. Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not just, I'm not sure going to pass that by. You say ich about Konami. She's been good in God's yeah, eye. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like her coming back pushes. Arai or Ami down, and I'm just kind of like, I'd rather the fresh thing. Then again, nah, if, if Konami's going to keep showing personality, then definitely, like, God's Eye needs that, but I don't know. They're a goober. They're all goobers now. That is their entire yeah, gimmick. They barely okay. show it, whereas Konami always does. So, I don't know. Um, but anyway, 
Anytime Konami's around, they that show. That's fair. Okay, that is. Mariah shows it a little bit. Sometimes, lot, yeah. Actually, now because she'll clothesline someone's head off and then <laughs> laugh after the match. It's like Lovely. what is wrong? With um, you? but anyway, that God's Eye team is against Utami, Saya, Azumi, and Miyu Amasaki. So, uh, poor Miyu is getting her arm bent. It's gonna be yeah, a good match. Sure, it should be fun. Uh, we then have oh dear God, Mayu Utani has a game. Momokogo, there's Natsuko Tora, Momo Anabe, and Raka. I'm sick and tired of stars in a way to die. It's never not to go Momo I and Star Kid. Care. We can never just get it the doesn't even matter. Nah, I think you I think you I think you rock it. Just, I, I'm so over it. It's happened so often. They've been feuding for two years. Well it's not a feud, they're just they're just house show. <sighs> I know what I mean. Half of this card is just matches just to happen. I don't know if you've realized that by now. No, Scott, I am 140 episodes deep into a Stardom Vice podcast, and I did not realize. Well, you're calling them a rivalry. They're not a rivalry. They just happen to have to wrestle each other. They're always paired off, almost always. So, I don't know. Um, Yeah, It's better than, uh, what was, who's the Cosmic Angels paired off with for like a decade? DDM? Yeah, and Waka was losing every time. I remember you and Dylan were going insane yeah. over. There's, there's been some. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. It was like the same yes. exact match. Probably, actually. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, then we have Himeka Retirement Road singles match. Himeka versus Mina Shirakawa, which presumably Mina is winning. Yeah, I, th- I, I would hope yes. Mina is winning. Um, <laughs> that would be, be pretty funny. Well, if she yeah, did, that, that's true. Um, and then we have the main event, which is Julia, Micah, and Mai Sakurai versus Tam, Natsupoi, and Waka. And yeah, DDM might win that one. The run of Waka ends here. Tragic. What a shame. What a shame. But if it doesn't, <clears throat> well, I mean, Tam could just pin Mai Sakurai. She could, but Ju- they, could, like, they could just Julia do could just once. pin Waka. So. Hey, 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 hey. No, don't use my reason <laughs> against me. That's, that's, not, that's not how the show goes. It's not my show, but it's not all how right, the show okay, goes. I'm sorry. Um, that, is, that is that show, though. That is all the show is to preview. So, Woo, yeah, we're we're finito. It hasn't taken us that long. I feel like this show with Dylan would have been like two and a half hours or something. Um, so thank you. How long does this go? Uh, long. Just uh, one hour 50, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, cool. do you want to do, do you have any closing remarks? Do you want to say something to the lovely people? Yeah, I have an interview with Billy Starks that came out today as of this recording. So, uh, she, she watched that. She's pretty cool. She, uh, she loves Japan, wants to go back as she should because she's gotten better because of it. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at got e wrestling if you don't already thanks all right and with that it is time to close the show if you want to if you want to stand you may stand if you want to sit you may sit leave today shine tomorrow you decide what you believe in ejo ejo